We are not having children's church this morning, so those that are going to Bible Buddies, you can go on over to Bible Buddies, okay? <laughs> Cynthia is sick this morning, so we need to pray for her. Those that are going to Bible Buddies, you can go on over. Well, good morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Uh, glad that you're here. Got a couple of announcements that I want to make. Let me share a couple of praises first. I hope everybody got the email this week about Corey Mayfield. That was a wonderful praise this week. His cancers are shrinking. And Roy Goodwin's biopsy come back negative. It was not cancer, so that was a praise. And we've got a lot in the hospital and sick, and we just need to lift them up in a special way today. Uh, remember tonight is Awesome August. Can you believe this is the last night of Awesome August? This seems like we just started, doesn't it? But we'll be at Calvary Baptist Church tonight. Clayton Dunsmore from out at Friendship will be preaching. If you're going to be in the combined choirs, be there at 5. Service starts at 6. And they called me yesterday and said that everybody thought I was joking last Sunday night when I said there was going to be pizza. I was not joking. There's going to be pizza tomorrow night. And they said to make sure everybody understood that because they had ordered a lot of pizza and they didn't want everybody to leave after church tonight, okay? I guess everybody thinks when I say something, I'm kidding sometimes. <laughs> There's a lot of announcements in your bulletin. I hope you take time to read that. We have so many opportunities to give uh, and to serve in our church, and, and all those are listed, and, and I pray you'll take advantage of those. Remember, our love offering during our uh, awesome August is going toward uh, boxes of blessing, and uh, be much in, in prayer for that. Any other announcements? Anybody else have an announcement? I got a thank you card I want to share. First of all, good to have Jeremy with us this morning. Jeremy Hubbard and his wife, Jessica and Alicia and Lucy and Lupe. Good to have you back this morning. They're living in Kentucky now and doing good. Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Jeremy's sister, passed away and they had uh, her funeral yesterday. So be much in prayer for them. Let me share a thank you note uh, with you. It says, Your kindness brightens our world. And this is from Adam Roberts and family. And this is for the love offering that was, was taken for them. Any other announcements this morning? Anybody else got anything you want to share? Anybody else got a praise or a testimony this morning? Thank God, my Amen. Thank you, Dennis. God is good, isn't he? We need to give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Don't we? <laughs> Anybody else got a testimony or a, a praise? Have you ever noticed how quiet a Baptist church gets when you ask for a testimony? <laughs> well, it is good to see everybody here. Let's have a prayer and then we'll fellowship one with another. Father, thank you for letting us be in your house today. Thank you for each one that's here today. Thank you for each one who's sitting in the choir today, filling up our choir. Father, we've heard so many wonderful comments about our choir and the worship band and the music last Sunday night. And uh, awesome August all month long has just been good. And we thank you for it. And Father, I just thank you for this Sunday morning that we can gather together in your house. Father, I pray for each person who's here today. We don't know what needs are in their heart or in their life, but you know all things. And I pray something will be said or done today that will minister to them while they're here in your house. Father, bless us as we worship. Bless us as we fellowship today. And again, I pray if there's one here today that's lost without you, today will be the day that they'll open up their eyes and see their need of a Savior and accept Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your goodness, grace, and mercy you pour out upon us. In Jesus' name we pray.
If you're a member of our church, just stay seated. If you're no, if you're a visitor, stay seated. If you're a member of our church, stand up and fellowship. Today, would you please stand? Let's sing it together. I am so
Is he your all in all this morning? Amen. He is worthy of all of our praise. Let's all stand together. Let's sing an old, old song. I feel like traveling on. You feel like traveling on this morning? Let's sing it together. if anybody had a praise I don't know God just put it on my heart that I just couldn't sit there you know Peter tells us that we always, always be able to tell of the hope that we have within us I can't stand up here this morning and tell you that anything God has done anything large in my life this week but I'm going to tell you I felt him every day Every morning I woke up to the sound of birds singing. I woke up with my mate laying beside me. I've gotten up and we've had breakfast, food on the table. Throughout the day, I've not gotten any disturbing news from any member of my family. Everything's gone well. And you know, it isn't the big things I think that God does in our life, although he does those occasionally, but it's the little things every day in my life 
that I just want to thank him and praise him. He's just so real. You know, this morning in our class, we talked about, do you ever feel like God's far away? Or maybe he's forgotten you. You've been praying about a need, and you've prayed and prayed, and the results just hasn't come, or God hasn't answered in the way you thought he should. But I reminded our class, as Scripture tells us, that God is always with us. We're his children. We're a child of God. He's our heavenly Father. He knows the need in my life and your life. And he's going to see us through whatever we go through. But I can't stand up here this morning and tell you any great thing that he's done other than he's just been there, provided for me. And um, I just thank him and praise him for that. Eddie asked me to have the prayer while you guys take up the offering. And isn't this a great thing? My opinion, this is a high time of worship when we can give back to God in the way he's blessed us. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for the privilege of being here, gathering in your house, gaining strength from one another as we share in fellowship. And now we've come to the high point of our service when we can show our love for you and, and giving back to you in the way that says, hey, you've blessed me this week. So I pray your blessing upon this offering that you will multiply it and use it as you see fit in the building of your kingdom. So Father, be with our pastor and others as they lead in, in this time of worship. And Father, just give us a great time in the Lord. I pray our time together will be pleasing in your sight. But I pray when we leave here today that there will be a song in our heart and a spring in our step and a joy in our heart and we'll be ready for this coming week. And we make this little prayer in our son's most holy name. Amen.
mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel sounds the call At the midnight cry We'll be going home When Jesus steps up Midnight cry when Jesus comes again. Kind of makes you feel like traveling home when you hear that, doesn't it? The singing I feel like traveling home a little bit ago and kind of took me back to 1980, 1981 when we went down to New Midway Baptist Church and they didn't have a choir director. They'd all come up in the choir and 
somebody would say, who wants to lead a song? And then somebody would step out and say, get the red book or get the blue book, or, and they'd call that, and that was one song that they sung at least every Sunday morning or every Sunday night. I feel like traveling home. And the other one was, uh, uh, feel like a, what's a prayer wheel? What's that? What's that song? Yeah, just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> That's not it either, is it? Is it? Well, turn to Numbers chapter 10. And the message today is an invitation to relationship. Yesterday afternoon, I stopped at uh, Sonic to get Bob Carroll and I some lunch. And I was sitting there waiting to order, and somebody come up on the driver's side and tapped on the window, and I rolled down the window, and they said, uh, can I ask you a question? And I figured they was going to ask me for some money or, or something, and I said, sure. And they said, do you have religion? And I said, no. And he said, well, good, I want to talk to you. And I said, wait just a minute. I said, I don't have religion. I've got a relationship. And they said, well, I still need to talk to you because you need to be religious. And I said, no. I said, it's about a relationship. I've got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. I've asked him to come into my heart. And, and, and this person never did understand where I was coming from. All they wanted to talk to me was about being religious, about he said, you need to ask Jesus into your heart, and you need to come to church, and you need to be a religious person. He said, that's what's wrong with our nation. People aren't religious anymore. And I said, what's wrong with our nation is people don't have a relationship with Jesus and live out that relationship with Jesus. Well, the message today is an invitation to relationship. And we're going to be in Numbers chapter 10, verse 29 and 32. Just kind of hold that place just a minute. The Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is a book of invitations. All through the Bible, God is continually inviting people to come to Him. He's inviting people to, He, he said, come and join me where I am. Or, or come and join me where I'm going. Or come and join me in what I'm doing. And that's what He wants us to do today as His children. He wants us to, to come and join Him where He's at, join with Him in what He's doing, and join with Him where He's, he's taking us, where He's going. To think that God, now think about this, to think that God in heaven would invite you and me to join Him in what He's doing and to go where He wants us to go is a blessing that is too wonderful to put into words. You can't begin to describe how wonderful it is that God would say, come to me, have a relationship with me, join me in what I'm doing. In this passage we're going to read in a few minutes, Moses is talking to a man by the name of Hobad. Now Hobad is Jethro. We find that out in, in, in Exodus 18. And Jethro is Moses' father-in-law. We also know from reading in Exodus that Jethro had come to visit with Moses and the children of Israel while they were camped out in the desert. And while he was there, he gave some wisdom to Moses. He shared some wisdom, some godly wisdom, concerning how Moses was leading the children of Israel. Now when we come to this passage, Israel is getting ready to pull up their tents, and leave the camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. And as they pull up their tents and they head off toward, uh, or leave Mount Sinai, they're heading toward Canaan. But before they leave, before they leave that camp, Moses takes the time to go to Hobad, Jethro, his father-in-law, and he says, I want to extend an invitation to you. I want to invite you to come with us, to go with us. And the reason I'm sharing this today is because, folks, there's a word here today for the church. 
And I want you to listen today. This is not just a word for Jethro or Hobah. It's a word for our church today. Look in verse number 29. And Moses said unto Hobad, the son of uh, Raguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying into the place of which the Lord said, I, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. Did you notice as Moses talks to his father-in-law, he uses words like us and we. He says, come with us. Be a part of us. He says, we will do you good. He's inviting his father-in-law to join with the nation of Israel as they head off toward the promised land. The saints of God, Israel was God's chosen people. I want you to understand we're God's chosen people today too. God has chosen us by Jesus. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And Moses invited his father-in-law to join them on their journey to the land that God had promised to give them. And he said, this is a land of blessing that God has promised us. This is a land of victory. Some 20 times in the Bible, Canaan is called a land of milk and honey. It was to be a good place. But best of all, it was going to be their place because God had promised it to them. And Moses says to his father-in-law, Come with us. Come be a part of us. We'll do you good. Now folks, listen. You and I are headed to a special place too. It's not a land of milk and honey but it's a land of peace and joy. It's a place of blessing. It's a place where none of the problems of this old world is going to follow us. It's a place called heaven, and it's a place that Jesus has promised to every one of us. He said, I go and prepare a place for you, a real place. When I get that place ready, I'm going to come and get you, take you home. Now, you've got to understand something here. Hobad, Jethro, was not a part of God's chosen people. He was not a part of the covenant of Israel. He was not a part of the promises God had made to Israel. But you know what Moses is doing? He's extending an invitation to his father-in-law. He's extending an invitation to Hobad. He said, I want you to join with Israel. I want you to come become a part of our family. I want you to have a relationship with us. I want you to be able to share in the blessings that God has given us. Moses says, come with us. What belongs to us will become yours. What God blesses us with, we'll bless you with. You and I have that very same privilege today, folks, we have the honor of going out and inviting people all around us to come with us, sharing our testimony, sharing our witness. Salvation is something that you and I are to share with other people. Just like that person come and knocked on my door, they were going about it the wrong way, but they had the right intention in their heart. They were trying to share Jesus. You and I need to be going out and telling people about Jesus. Now, if I had $100 this morning, and I don't, I looked in my bill for I've got six. If I ever have $100, Bobby's given me too much, and she didn't realize it. <laughs> but if I had $100, and I went to five different people today and said, I want to give you $20, and I shared with Everybody else had a $100 bill. I would have shared with you what I have, but I wouldn't have nothing left. But if I share my faith, now listen, folks, if I share my, share my faith and go out and invite somebody who does not know about Jesus to come with us and ask Jesus to come into their heart and be their Savior, I have given away what I have but I've not lost anything. I still have what I've shared. 
In fact, if I share my faith with somebody else, I've increased the value of what I have because I've just laid up treasures in heaven. Salvation is the only thing I know that gets more valuable as you give it away to somebody else. Folks, we need to be giving away our salvation. We need to be sharing Jesus. We need to be going out and telling, saying to people, come with us. And inviting people to come with us is more than a privilege. It's an obligation. We are commanded to share what we have with other people. Now look in verses 29 through 32. And Moses said unto Hobad, the son of Raguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying unto the place which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go. Have you ever witnessed to somebody, and they said, I don't want to hear a word that you're saying. I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to hear about religion. I don't want to hear about the church. I've shared this with you before. One of the most godly men I ever knew was Johnny Worthy. And he and I was witnessing one night, and we went to witness to a man. The, we, the man was fine, you know, as long as we were talking about church, as long as we were talking about it. But when we began to share the plan of salvation, he went and locked himself in the bathroom and said, I'm not coming out until you leave. Johnny Worthy got a chair, pulled it up to the bathroom door, and said, since you're not going anywhere, I'm going to share the plan of salvation with you. <laughs> and you know what? About six months later, that man was saved. He, he, at first, he said, I don't want anything you've got. And that's what Hobad, Jethro, said. He said, I don't want to go with you all. I'll just stay here. He said, but I will depart my, to my own land, to my own kindred. In other words, I'd rather be with my own kind. I'd rather be in my own little part of the world than go with you. And he said, leave us not, I pray thee. And this is Moses talking to him. He said, leave us not, I pray thee. For as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and that thou mayest be uh, to us instead of eyes, and it shall be if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same we will do unto thee. Hobad, I've already said, is not a part of Israel. He's outside the covenant relationship with God. In other words, he was a lost man. He's cut off from all the blessings and promises that God had made to the chosen people. He's got no hope of salvation except he accepts Moses' invitation to become a part of the nation of Israel. So Moses invites him. He said, come be a part of our family. Folks, listen. There's no salvation today outside the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation can only be found in a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. And if you ask somebody, are you saved? Do you know you're going to heaven you know what I hear more times than not? Well, I'm a member of a church. Folks, your name can be on every church row in the country, but you can still be lost. Unless your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will not go to heaven. When the Bible says you must be born again, it means exactly what it says. There must be a moment in your life, a time in your life, when you realize how lost you were and then you look to Jesus by faith and you trust Him as your Savior by faith. And when you do that, you know what happens? You immediately become a part of God's family. God's forever family. And as a member of God's family, folks, you're entitled. Listen, you're entitled to all the rights and privileges of being a part of God's family. In other words, he says, whatever I have is yours. You're a child of the king. You become a child of God. You're adopted into his family. You secure a place in heaven. You are saved to the uttermost. Let me tell you something. I'd rather be adopted into God's family 
than anything else. Because once God adopts you, He'll never turn His back on you. And Moses tell Habad, did you hear that? Moses said, oh, please come with us. He said, we will do thee good. Moses says, if you'll come with us, we'll treat you right. If you'll come with us, God's blessing us and we'll share those blessings with you. He's saying to Hobad, Hobad, you need us. And if Hobad wants to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, he's going to have to accept the invitation of Moses and go with Israel. But I want you to see something else that's in that passage. Moses not only said, you need us, but did you hear what else he said? He said, we need you. He said in verse 31, he said, leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness and that thou mayest be with us instead of our eyes. He is a man of the desert. The desert was his home place. Just like the world is the home of a lost person. Hobad knew the desert like the back of his hand. He knew where the best campsites were. He knew where the water was. He knew where the best trails and paths were. He knew all about the desert. And Moses was saying to him, you know, you'll be a blessing to us. We need you. Come with us. We'll do you good, and you'll do us good. Folks, when somebody's saved and joined the church, you know what they ought to hear? They ought to hear the same thing Moses said to Hobay. They ought to hear us say, you need us, but we need you too to be a part of God's church. When people come to the church, the church should be able to offer people the things they can't find anywhere else in the world. That'll help them grow. They should be able to find in the church somebody that genuinely cares for them. They ought to be able to find somebody in the church someone who'll help carry their burdens. They ought to be able to find in the church fellowship, acceptance, and family. And folks, when God saves a sinner, He gives that sinner His Spirit. But along with the Spirit also comes the gifts of the Spirit. And God gives every person that is saved a gift for a special task in the church. And when God sends somebody and sends them to our church, God's church at Highland Park, it's not by accident. None of us are here by accident. God knew exactly where you needed to be to use the gift that He's given you to share with other people. Look around at the people that are doing jobs in the church. And some of them hadn't been here very long. But look at how they're using the gift and the talent and the ability that God's given them. They've just plugged in to be a part of what God's doing in the church. And you're not here by accident. God sends every one of us to His church so you and I can fulfill a special place of ministry that nobody else can fill. And again in verse 29, Moses said to Hobad, son of Raguel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we're journeying to the place which the Lord said, I'll give it to you. Come thou with us and we'll do thee good. <coughs> For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Moses said, God's speaking pretty good about Israel right now. In other words, He's blessing us. He tells Hobad, He said, come with us. God is so good to us. God is blessing us. And we want to share all that God's doing for us with you. Folks, we ought to share all of God's blessings, all of what God's doing for us. We ought to share with other people. It's too good to keep all to yourself. You see, the wilderness was not the nation of Israel's final destination. They were headed to the promised land. And this old world is not our final destination. This old world is not the home of the church. Folks, we're just passing through. We're just sojourners. We're just pilgrims. We're headed to a much, much better place that God has prepared for us. 
And in verse number 29, the phrase, will give it to you, Moses is saying, I want you to know, hey, bad, my father-in-law, there's hope for you. There's hope for tomorrow because the Lord has promised us that there are better things on down the road. Folks, God has promised us there's better things down the road. You know, I've got to where the last three or four nights, I've just hated to cut the TV on. Because everything on TV, it's either about Hurricane Harvey and all the destruction and catastrophe that's going on there, or you read about right supremacists, you read about Black Lives Matter, uh, you read about what was, happened in Knoxville, and, and thank goodness that God answered prayers. The churches in Knoxville got together and prayed. They prayed yesterday morning. They prayed Thursday. They prayed Friday. There in the park at Fort Sanders, they had a prayer and kindness day, and thousands of people came and sat down in that park just to show the love of God and pray. And you know what? Love won out yesterday. Prayer won out yesterday. Folks, you and I ought to be able to share the hope. There's a better day coming if you say. There's a better day coming if you're a child of God. And Moses tells Hobad, he said, God's spoken good to us. You know what he's saying? He said, the Lord redeemed us. And the Lord did not abandon us. Folks, God did not save you to abandon you. God did not redeem you to abandon you. Moses said, tells Habad, God did not redeem us to leave us out here in the wilderness. He's going to go with us. He's going to bless us. He's going to help us all the way to the promised land. Folks, this old world's not our home. God's not going to abandon us. He's going to help us and bless us and lead us all the way <coughs> till we get to glory. As you and I journey toward glory, He has promised to sustain us, He's promised to take care of us, to never leave us and to forsake us. When Hobad first heard the invitation, his first response was, no, I'll just stay here in the desert. But in verse number 30, he said unto him, I will not go, I'll depart into my own land, to my own kindred. But you read later on in the Bible that he changed his mind. Hobad accepted the invitation of Moses and he was blessed. He was blessed by God just as God blessed the nation of Israel. He was blessed just as Moses promised he'd be blessed. Folks, here's the invitation today. If you're not saved today, the invitation is to come to Jesus and be saved and come with us. Come and be a part of what God's doing here. We will do you good, and you'll do us good too. Come with us. Come to Jesus and be saved. Come to Jesus and serve with us. Come with us as we move into the future and we make our way to the promised land. God has a plan for us, and we can either go willingly and be blessed or we can say no to God and stay in the world and miss out on all the blessings that He has for us. Folks, don't say no to God. Say yes to Him right now. Before He even says anything to you, say yes to Him and come and get what God wants to give you right now. I've told you this story. I'm not going to tell it again, but about Charles Redmond being at a black uh, pastor's conference one day and when he got up to preach I'm not going to tell you the whole story but when it come time for him to preach he got up and he's waiting to be introduced and nobody introduced him everybody just sat there with their heads down not saying a word and he said after about what seemed like an hour and a half somebody in the back of the church finally said yes Lord then in a few minutes somebody else said yes Lord and then before long, everybody was saying, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then the moderator got up and said to Brother Charles, he said, We've already said yes to whatever the Lord has to say to us. Now you come and tell us what the Word is the Lord has for us. God's speaking to you right now. And as He speaks to you, you need to say, Yes, Lord. 
Whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do. If you want me to be saved, I'll be saved. If you want me to be a part of, of a church and grow and serve and fellowship, the answer is yes, Lord. Whatever it is you want me to do, yes, Lord. Then when the invitation is coming, you be obedient to him and follow through to whatever you said yes to the Lord about. Father, I want to thank you today that we can have a relationship with you. And I thank you that when we hear you say, come with us, we'll do you good. And we join with you and become a part of your family and have that relationship with you. Father, you never leave us, you never forsake us, you bless us, you bestow upon us whatever we need to get through each and every day. And then, Father, you take us by the hand, lead us through the deep, dark valleys of life, and then one day you'll lead us through those gates of pearl, down the streets of God, and we'll be home to the land that you promised us. If there's one here today that's lost without Jesus, I pray today, today you'd be saved. Today you'd say, I want to have a relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and you've been saved but you've never followed Jesus in believer's baptism, and this is where God wants you to worship and serve, I pray you come and say, I've been saved, but I've never been baptized. I've never been a part of a church, and I want to be a part of a family, have a relationship not only with God, but I want to have a relationship with this church family. I want to use my gifts and talents and abilities to serve you here. Maybe God's telling you that you've been saved, you're part of the church, but you're not using your gifts and talents. You're wasting them. You're not in that place of service that you need to be. Come today and rededicate your life to Jesus. Say, God, plug me in wherever I need to be plugged in to use my talents and gifts to bless you. I don't know what God's spoken to you, but I pray you've already said yes. And as soon as we begin to sing, you'll step out and come this morning. Maybe it's just to pray for somebody. But whatever it is you need to do, say yes right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all stand. If you need to come, come this morning.
tab and the pastor gets down in the altar and whoever he's praying with has to pull him up, doesn't he? Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Let's reach across the aisles and join our hands and hearts together. Remember, 6 o'clock at Calvary, if you're going to sing in the combined choir, be there at 5 and stay after church and eat pizza. And somebody's already asked me, what kind of pizza is it? It's Just right. pray the missionary prayer. Lord, thank you for what I'm going to eat. If I get it down, you keep it down, okay? <laughs> Love God.